in this fifth lecture on Lagrangian mechanics, today we shall apply the Lagrangian mechanics or for non-conservative holonomic system. That is, we shall um, obtain the Euler-Lagrange equation which is applicable for uh, non-conservative holonomic system. So our aim is to obtain Euler-Lagrange equation for <coughs> non-conservative holonomic system. A conservative force field uh, is one for which the potential can be derived from at the gradient of a scalar point function. For non-conservative force field, uh, no such <coughs> potential function exists. We shall uh, start from um, modified form of Hamilton's principle. The Hamilton's principle is Hamilton's principle of least action is dt integrated from time 1 to 2 is the zero. This is the Hamilton's principle of least action. The modified version of it, modified Hamilton's principle, principle is that delta of 1 to 2 t plus w dt is 0 which can also be written as delta t plus delta w dt integrated from time 1 to 2 where <coughs> t is the kinetic energy and delta w is the work done summation over I to and if I the force acting on the I particle and the virtual displacement of the I particle. In general if we write <coughs> Ri uh, in terms of generalized coordinates we write it as a function of Qj the set of Qj's and of time so that we write dr that is the change as del r i del d plus del r i summation over j is equal to 1 to n del q j d q j virtual displacement is one for which takes place at a particular instant this is the general displacement this is the general infinitesimal displacement decimal displacement for virtual displacement we write it delta by delta d by delta and this is written as summation over j is equal to 1 to r delta r i delta q j delta q j virtual displacement are such that it doesn't violate any condition imposed on the system but it takes place uh, instantaneously this is known as virtual displacement It takes place at a particular time. So this is the and the corresponding walk down is called the virtual walk down again by the applied force. So this is the virtual walk down. That is the walk done by the applied force uh, for a virtual displacement um, for a virtual displacement. <coughs> uh, the theory, the modified Hamilton's principle should be such that for conservative system it reduces to original Hamilton's principle. The, that should be a consistent development. So first we calculate 
uh, delta W for a conservative system and see what we get. This is the general definition, <coughs> general definition of virtual displacement and if we replace this in terms of um, generalized coordinates, this becomes summation over i and j if i dot del r i del q j delta q j and we define as summation over j is equal to 1 to n summation over i is equal to 1 to n if i dot del r i del q j times delta q j where we write the generalized force as q j times delta q j where keep the generalized force is defined as force is given as q j is equal to summation over i is equal to 1 to m if i dot f i dot delta r i delta q j we shall <coughs> calculate a uh, few uh, generalized force in the problem pro problem that we we'll consider in, in such way for conservative system this is the general expression for um, for the force since QJ may not have the dimension of length always. Q, the generalized force may not have the dimension of um, dimension of force always. But this W, the product of generalized force and generalized coordinates, must have the dimension of work. This is the restriction. Uh, let me first calculate calculate what the generalized force becomes for um, a Cartesian system. In Cartesian coordinates, in Cartesian coordinates, we have R is equal to uh, R i is equal to i cap x i j cap y i plus k cap z r. This is the displacement of the ith particle. And in this case, if we consider that q j, uh, q1, q2, q3, uh, be the coordinates, uh, then we have del r i, del x i. Del r i, del x i is equal to i cap del r i del y i is equal to j cap etc and the force if we can it would be better if we consider a single particle system Sing, consider a single particle system for which uh, r is equal to i cap x plus j cap y plus k cap z and the generalized coordinates is y q1 is x q2 is y and q3 is z so del r del q1 is equal to del r del x is equal to i cap similarly del r del q2 is equal to del r del y is equal to j cap and del r del q3 is equal to del r del z is equal to k cap and the force q1 is equal to f dot del r del x this is equal to f is written as i in i cap fx j cap fy k cap fz so this is f times i cap this is equal to fx so q1 is fx Similarly, Q2 is Fy and Q3 is Fz. So, this is Fy and Fz. 
So we see that the generalized force uh, are nothing but the force that we encounter in Cartesian system. In polar system, what happens to the expression for the generalized force? <clears throat> in, in polar coordinates, polar coordinates, r theta, we have position vector r is equal to r times r cap, so that the two generalized coordinates are r and r cap, so del r del r is equal to r cap and del r del theta is equal to r theta cap. So that if q1 is, this is r, if we consider r as the first coordinate, so this is r times del r del r, so this is f dot r cap, so this is f r, the radial component of force, and q2 is f dot del r del theta, so this is f times r theta cap, so this becomes r times f theta. Similarly, we can find out the uh, generalized force in other coordinates. Now we come to the case that what happens to the generalized force if, uh, if we are act, uh, dealing with a conservative force field. So, what happens to generalized force QJ uh, for a conservative system, for a conservative force field, we have if I, the force acting on the ith particle is delta ri after one p so in other words this is minus i cap del del xi plus j cap del del yi plus k cap del del zi operating on v and in which case i r can be written as R vector can be R i vector can be written as i cap x i j cap y i k cap z i so that del r i del q j is equal to i cap del x i del q j plus j cap del del y i del y i del q j plus k cap del z i del q j in which case if we use q j uh, and we use this definition for f this definition of f and this definition for del r i del q j we get summation over i if i dot del r i del q j is equal to minus summation over i this thing multiplied by this thing so this we have i cap del v del x i plus j cap del v del y i plus k cap del v del z i this is for f, f i times del r i del q j for del r i del q j i write i cap del x i del q j j cap del y i del q j plus k cap 
del Z I del Q J. This can be written as minus summation over I del V del X I del X I del Q J plus del V del Y I del Y I del Q J plus del V del Z I del Z I del Q Z. If we perform the sum over I, this is minus del V del Q J. So that this Q J, <coughs> this Q Q J becomes simply del V del Q J and delta W, and we have delta W for a conservative system becomes summation over J. Mm, we have this one. <laughs> we write it as minus summation over J, summation over J. For QJ we write ma minus del V del QJ delta QJ. This is equal to minus delta V. So, which simply becomes minus delta V, so that this equation for conservative system, system becomes delta T minus delta V dt integrated from 1 to 2, which is nothing but delta L the the original Euler uh, Hamilton's principle. So we see the modified version of the Hamilton's principle indeed reduces to the original Hamilton's principle that we have already introduced for a conservative system. Mm -hmm. Now for we now again go back to uh, the general discussion. General discussion that is <coughs> The, as for modified uh, Hamilton's principle, the virtual work done by the applied force can be written in terms of generalized force and, and the ge virtual displacements of the generalized coordinates. So what happens to the principle? Uh, if we now apply this expression for delta w in the modified Hamilton's principle. Modified Hamilton's principle, this delta t part mm, gives you integration from 1 to 2, summation over summation over j, delta t delta q j minus d v t minus ddt del t del q j dot this is the contribution coming from this and then we have this contribute so this multiply plus um, delta q j dt is equal to 0 integrated from 1 to 2. So mm, this part together with this coming from delta t part and this is the contribution from delta w part. We we conclude that this part, the quantity within the second bracket is zero for each of the degrees of freedom as the degrees of freedom are being independent, delta q's are arbitrary and the euler lagrange equation becomes This if we if we 
have a conservative system, this is the general expression. For a conservative system, this is equal to minus delta V delta QJ for a conservative system. Sorry, this is for a conservative system and in which case if we take it on the other side this becomes uh, the original Euler Lagrange equation ddt of del l del, del q dot del q j dot minus del l del q j is equal to j um, if we write it as qj what we have obtained qj yes um, yes uh, this becomes a negative sign because there is a negative sign coming from the core core force part so that when it comes to this side this becomes minus del del qj of t minus b which is the lagrangian and since v does not depend on velocities for a conservative system this part can also be written as del L T of del q j dot t minus v is equal to zero as delta v del q j dot is equal to zero for a conservative system conservative force field. For non-conservative force field, the potential uh, may depend on velocity. So what we have obtained, we have uh, modified the Hamilton's principle of least action uh, from, from this, which is applicable for a conservative holonomic system, to this one for a non-conservative holonomic system. And we have shown that this expression indeed reduces to this if we consider a conservative force field. However, for a general case, this, <coughs> uh, this principle leads to the modified Euler-Lagrange equation for non-conservative holonomic system to this. For this equation, again for a conservative system becomes mm, the normal um, Model uh, Euler Lagrange equation that is, this is L, this is L, and on the right hand side we have G, we have zero. Now, one thing may happen that the force that acts on a body, on a system, is partially conservative and partially non conservative. Then, what will happen? <laughs> then, we consider such a situation. If Fr, if, if I is partly conservative and and partly non-conservative, that is, we write Fi as if I conservative plus if I non-conservative. Then for a fire part there exists a potential minus gradi and this for this there is no potential term. And we <coughs> calculate the virtual virtual walk term. The virtual walk down delta w now becomes this is the expression if i dot del r i del q j delta q j and we write for f i if i we write this part minus There is a vector sign also.
and for this part we have i is equal to 1 to n here we have sum over i and here also i have a sum over i this is f i non-conservative dot del r i del q j delta q j this part becomes minus delta v as we have shown earlier so the, and this part becomes qj delta qj this part takes into account the non-conservative part so the hamilton's principle modified hamilton's principle from this part we get integration 1 to 2 summation over summation so we get delta of uh, integration 1 to 2 plus delta w from delta w has two contribution one is delta t minus delta v this is one part dt this is one part and another part is that summation over j integration qj delta qj dt from 1 to 2 is equal to 0 so what we get ultimately this is summation over j integration from this part we get uh, this is l del l del qj minus ddt of del l del qj dot plus qj delta qj dt is equal to 0 which leads to the euler lagrange equation as ddt of del l del qj dot minus del l del qj is equal to qj so in this case we have obtained three different types of, of expression for the Euler Lagrange equation. Let me per, um, write them uh, side by side. There are three different versions of Euler Lagrange equation. This is DDT of del L QJ dot minus del L del QJ is equal to zero. Where if I is entirely conservative. Full becomes totally conservative. We have also DDT of DT DQJ dot minus DT where if I is fully non-conservative and there is third version this is ddt of del l del q j dot minus del l del q j is equal to q j in this case if i is partly conservative and partially non-conservative. The conservative part uh, is represented by a potential which is taken in within L and non-conservative part is taken into consideration by this. So there are three different versions of euler lagrange equation that one fi can find in text.
there is an another variety or another special case of Euler Lagrange equation uh, which is applicable to the dissipative system which will be taken in our next class. So what we have done in the fifth lecture is that we have modified the Hamilton's principle which was initially applied for conservative system to accommodate for non-conservative system and we have shown that for conservative system this new principle or modified principle indeed reduces to the original one which was applied for conservative system then we have uh, derived the equation Euler Lagrange equation which is applicable for conservative system and we conclude that there are three different versions of Euler Lagrange equation this is applicable for the system where the force is fully conservative and is taken care of by the potential. This version of the equation is used when the force acting on the system is totally non-conservative and um, this here is generalized force takes, uh, take, um, take care, takes the care of non-conservative force. And in and this is the most general case when the force acting on the system is partially conservative and partially non-conservative. The conservative part of the force is taken care of in by the potential and which is included in the Lagrangian and non-conservative force is represented by the generalized force. So these are the three different versions of Euler Lagrange equation. In the next class we shall consider a special class of conservative force that is the dissipative force which as per Stokes law is a velocity dependent force.